I'm Ryan Lightfoot-Brown of Fund Calibre. We're joined today by Joe Curtis, manager of the City of London Investment Trust. Thank you very much for joining us. Pleasure. Um, you've been running the fund since 1991. Um, that was its, actually its 100th year anniversary. It's a very long time to be running um, a trust. Do you think you would have been running it for that long when you first started? And uh, what keeps you interested in all that time? Well, I uh, find the stock market fascinating and I also enjoy building long-term record for the investors in, in the fund. I didn't really, um, I didn't, didn't have a sort of game plan when I started, but I knew I, had a, I was very fortunate to be given responsibility at quite a young age, and um, I just wanted to make the most of it once I'd been appointed manager. Um, and the trust itself has got a remarkable track record of raising its dividends for, is it 53 years now yes. in a row? How have you managed to do that so well? Well, I think the, obviously having a core of quality companies that can consistently grow their dividends in their portfolio is, is very important. But also the investment trust structure is really helpful in that, um, in fact, that couldn't really have been done in an open-ended structure. The investment trust can retain some earnings each year. So some of the dividends that are paid into the fund up to 15% can be retained and put into revenue reserve. And this we do in the good years. And then in the poor years, for when a dividend cuts across the market, we're able to Pay, pay out or increase the dividend from the revenue reserve. And has there been a time recently where you've needed to use the revenue reserve? Yes, there has. In fact, in the 28 years since I became manager, we've needed the revenue reserve seven times, and it's almost inevitable in periods when you get dividend cuts. In, back in the 12 months to June 2010, in the aftermath of the financial crisis, we actually paid out around 6% from our revenue reserve. Um, and that was a period when, after the financial crisis, something like a quarter of FTSE 350 companies either cut or passed their dividends. So it, it would, would have been extremely difficult um, not to have used revenue reserve to increase the dividend. And the UK stock market is yielding around 4.5% at the moment. That's almost double what the global index is doing. Are you worried about the sustainability of that at all? Do you think there are some companies there that might cut their dividends? Um, well, you always get dividend cuts. And in the last 12 months, you know, quite big companies like Vodafone, Marks and Spencers and Royal Mail have all cut their dividends or announced forthcoming cuts. I mean, the UK yield is, is attractive, but I think the world index is very much held down by the US, which is um, you know, over half the world index, and the dividend yield there is only about 2%, but you do get many more share buybacks. Companies uh, you know, often go that route rather than the dividend route. But across the market, I'm pretty confident about that yield being sustainable, in fact, seeing a small amount of growth as well. And you've got a large amount in consumer staples companies at the moment. So those are the sort of companies where we continue buying things, even in a market downturn. Is this a reflection of your view on the overall economy? Uh, well, as I said, we like a core of consistent companies, and consumer staples do make that uh, mark. I mean, we have about currently about 17% in consumer staples companies, and these companies, you say, are less... Uh, react less bad, badly to economic downturns. People, they're, they're the kind of core products um, like soap or butter or food products that people buy regardless. And what I like about um, some of the stocks we have in our portfolio, like Unilever in, in our top 10 and Diageo, is that um, they are very global and so they're not dependent on any one economy. And indeed, they give you a lot of exposure to emerging markets. And some of the best growth for these companies is in emerging markets as people gain more affluence and able to buy Western consumer products. And you touched on sort of the international exposure of those companies, but you've also got some international companies in your fund at all. What makes you prefer those over their UK peers? Yes, we have about 10% in overseas listed stocks. We have a 90% in the UK listed. Of course, some of the UK listed businesses are very global, as, as we've just been discussing. But in general, the 10% in, in non-UK listed tends to be companies that either are doing something you can't really find in the UK stock market. We bought into Microsoft, for example, back in 2011, and that you can't really find an equivalent in the UK. And secondly, in some sectors, it gives you some extra diversification. Well, where we own both uh, Glaxo, SmithKline, and AstraZeneca in the pharmaceutical sector, and they're great companies. We nevertheless, rather than having just focused on those two companies, we do have Merck of the US, Novartis as well in, in that sector. So it gives us some extra diversification in some, some areas. Well, Joe, that's been really interesting. Thank you very much for, for joining us. And for more information on the City of London Investment Trust, please visit funcalibre.com.